I am very excited to share this box with you today. If you like soul, jazz, or funk music from the late 60s and 70s, this is for you. The Story of Cadet Records, a Vinyl Me Please anthology box set. Yet another Vinyl Me Please video. Again, I am not sponsored by them. I really wish I was because this is getting ridiculous, but they have a lot of really good funk, soul, and jazz reissues, and they have more coming, and there are ways that you can actually get them for free. Go check out this video to find out how. But today, I'm very excited, as I've been since this was announced, the newest Vinyl Me Please anthology box set, The Story of Cadet Records. Now, if you're new to Vinyl Me Please, again, go check out this video. They offer anthology box sets. Some are artist driven, but my favorites are actually the label features or the genre features because you actually get a set of different LPs from different artists, all from the same label or genre. Now in the past, I've featured the story of Ghetto Records, which is an amazing set of Latin Boogaloo soul from the music of Joe Baton's Ghetto Records label. They've also done ones on Blue Note Records, and I just got another one on the story of Vanguard Records, since Vinyl Me Please has actually turned me on to folk music. But this set, the story of Cadet Records, is really special to me for one particular record included in here, Dorothy Ashby Afro Harping. I basically bought this entire box set for this record, but there are other killer ones, so let's go over the whole thing and show what you get and talk about the vinyl. This entire set, with the exception of Electric Mud from Muddy Waters, was cut by Bernie Grunman at BG Mastering, and from those cuts, all are triple A masters, with the exception of side two of Mother Nature's Son from Ramsey Lewis, which had some tape issues and needed to be transferred digitally. Electric Mud is also a AAA cut as well, but from Barry Grint at Alchemy Mastering at Air. So you get seven and a half AAA master cuts on this box set, pretty awesome. Just to have a AAA cut of some of these is worth the price set alone. As I mentioned, the Afro harping. The outer box of this is very nice and quality, as always with these VMP box sets. And I actually made an entire unboxing video if you wanna see every piece of this and not hear me blab over all of it. The jackets on these as well, we will go over individually are all hip on sleeve jackets, which means that they have the image actually like stickered onto the cardboard of the jacket, which was how they did it back in the 60s, as opposed to printing direct to cardboard, which is what they do today. Now there's some confusion and debate on that on the listings for Discogs on this, but these are tip on jackets and they're also a very nice matte finish. You also get this really cool sticker logo as well as a letter from Marshall Chess himself and this amazing 36 page booklet which goes further into the story and has some great pics of the artists and covers. Also, this box set is limited to 1000 numbered copies and they are hand numbered as you can see here. You can see from the sticker here that these are made in the Czech Republic, which I'm pretty sure means that they were pressed at GZ Vinyl. And we had some issues with the vinyl here that we're gonna go over as we go along. Cadet is an imprint of Chess Records, which is a legendary blues label that's released artists such as John Lee Hooker, Howlin' Wolf, and of course, Chuck Berry, and pretty much all of the greats. And Cadet actually started out being called Argo Records and later changed the name to avoid confusion and a lawsuit with the British label Argo. A lot of the information here comes direct from Marshall Chess, who is the son of the Chess family and ran the Cadet imprint label. You can hear all the details on a really cool podcast that Vinyl Me Please puts out to accompany this box set to get the entire story. I really suggest going to listen to that if you really wanna get into this set or if you're not interested at all in all of these LPs, but maybe you still wanna know the whole story, I will link to that podcast below. The Cadet imprint was a response at the time to the exploding soul and psych rock scene that was happening in 1965 and was an attempt to get more artists going in that vein. Cadet had a full warehouse building dedicated to this music. As Marshall Chess mentions in the podcast, it was eight stories and had it all. Executive offices, recording studios, a pressing plant, plating plant, cover design. You could go from inception to production in one day, and sometimes they actually did. The building actually still stands today, but it's now a condo. So imagine living in a place where legendary blues and soul records were created by Etta James. Names, no less. You should definitely go listen to the entire podcast to get the entire story. I don't want to get anything else incorrect here or try to recreate it. Instead, let's dive into these records and see what else you get with this box set. Also, if you do find 
anything here helpful, please take a minute to subscribe. It really does mean a lot and you won't be sad that you did. I'm absolutely obsessed with making videos about vinyl, so you will enjoy them. First one out of the box here is probably also the most recognizable in the batch. Also one of the best LPs in this batch in my opinion, Etta James, Tell Mama. This first came out in 1968. This is an amazing recreation of this. You can see here with this matte cover. This is one of my favorite Etta James records. Very soulful, very funky. It has a lot of really great hits on it, including Security, Tell Mama, the, the main track. But my favorite track on here is I'd Rather Go Blind. I actually have a version of this from the Frighteners, who are a reggae group, a reggae rock steady group off of the Daptone label, and they are absolutely amazing. And this 45 here of I'd Rather Go Blind is not on any of their LPs, but is one of the best tracks that they ever recorded. Like I said here, this is probably one of the easiest records to find out of the batch if you don't want to get this entire box set. There's many other pressings of this. I'm pretty sure it was actually just re-released recently. I think I just saw it on Discogs. There might be colored versions of it out there. But for this triple A lacquer cut by Bernie Grumman, you will have to get this box set. So this is the reason why I actually bought this box set. It's actually the reason why I wanted to make this video for you guys and share this. One of my favorite artists, Dorothy Ashby. And what's great about this is I actually found this on CD when I was like, 13 or 14 years old and I was just getting into like jazz and funk music and stuff like that and I think I found this at like a Barnes and Noble or something like that and it's actually a really nice recreation of the actual LP. I was just looking it over here to make this video. They give you an original um, recreation of the label here. The, the cadet label is recreated there on the CD. When I found this, it was like, I felt like I cracked a code. I felt like I had found some kind of treasure because none of my friends were talking about Dorothy Ashby. And also the type of funk music, the 60s, the sound of the drums, the sound of everything that was going on here, the sound of this recording, it really, really grabbed me and it really captured me. So I was inspired by it forever. So now I have it here. As you can see, again, on this beautiful matte cover with an amazing recreation of the original jacket, tip on sleeves again, and then this amazing recreation of the cadet logos from the original record. This is Bernie Grundman cut AAA lacquer, so it sounds amazing. It sounds very good, very quiet vinyl. This is also released in 1968, and the arrangements here are by Richard Evans, and they're extremely funky and extremely jazzy. Dorothy Ashby, if you don't know who she is, she is actually a harpist. She's got a lot of really good uh, funk and soul arrangements with her music that I have found. It, like a lot of her stuff is really good accessible jazz, even though it's on harp, which is an instrument that you don't normally find in jazz or funk or soul music. So to have this is just this real great treasure. This record is extremely hard to find. There are copies of it out there that go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Even the reissues are extremely hard to find. I've been looking for this. I've been collecting records now for 23 years uh, almost, and I've never been able to find this record in an affordable way, and now I have. So I'm very, very excited to have it now, and even to get it with this whole box set was really great. The next one here is Muddy Waters Electric Mud. Now it's one of the only ones in here that's actually a gatefold record. So you can see here on the jacket that it's a gatefold. The gatefold pulls out to this amazing picture of Muddy Waters here. And this is also on the Cadet Concept label, which was, I guess, even a smaller imprint sub-label of Cadet. Got even more experimental, as you'll see with some of the other records. There's another Cadet Concept label in the box set here as well. but. This record is talked about extensively on the Box Set podcast because I guess apparently people were expecting Muddy Waters to be releasing a record, especially near around the chess label, were expecting, I guess, a more traditional blues record. But this record grooves so hard. It's way more on the funk and rhythm and blues side of things. The first song here, I Just Want to Make Love to You, is a really awesome version of the song. Now, the podcast goes on to say that it sounds like he's just mailing it in. It sounds like... He wanted to just help out with the label and go along and be a good soldier because they wanted him to be more experimental and psychedelic or whatever. I don't hear that, man. I hear a really awesome record. I hear a guy branching out into some other ideas, but maybe if that was all driven by the label and not necessarily by him, I can't speak to any of that. But what I do know is I think this sounds really good. This cut here from Alchemy Mastering sounds amazing. I don't know if this is the same cut that Third Man Records released. Apparently Third Man Records released a version of this also, but there's also a couple other reissues that are floating around out there. Another really good record to have. 
The next one here is Terry Collier, Occasional Rain. Apparently a very hard one to find on Discogs, very sought after out there as well. I have never heard this record before. I was never even turned on to this artist before, but I got into this and at first I wasn't really into it, but it really sucked me in with these little blues segues that start out the record. There's like a 30 second blues segue and then they keep coming back throughout the record, just him just jamming on a guitar, acoustic guitar, and it sounds really good. And the slow tracks on this one really, really are very awesome. Now, the recreation of this cover is beautiful. As you can see here, the matte finish on this jacket just looks so nice. It looks really, really good in the light here. And this, the, the ones that are black or the darker finish come out way better in this matte color. You can see here on the back with the recreation of all of the lyrics and everything. As well, this is a different version of the Cadet label, the orange label. I think it came out closer in the later 70s, probably a later version of the label. But again, a really, really hard to find record on Discogs. I mean, I'm seeing prices of it for like over two or three hundred dollars. And that's if you can even find it. Some of them you can't even find. There's only like five or six copies of this version. I don't think there's a modern repress out there. This is the only one and it's a triple A cut by Bertie Grumman. The next one here is the Rotary Connection, Hey Love. Again, along with that Terry Collier, not familiar at all with the Rotary Connection. Never really listened to them very much before, but I'm starting to kind of get into them. Apparently this is the last album that they ever recorded. I looked it up here. This one came out in 1970 and this is also on the Cadet Concept label. You can see here it has the Cadet Concept just like the Muddy Waters did as well. This one is getting on to that like 70s, you know, large choral group singing stuff. I'm not totally into that kind of stuff. But again, like a lot of these records, you gotta really dig deep with some of these tracks. You get some really good funk and soul gem nuggets that are coming on on some of these in inner tracks here. So don't just listen to the first track and write it off there. Definitely go deep into these and listen to them. But the Rotary Connection's pretty cool. I've never gotten into them before, but this is pretty awesome. I know that these guys were one of the ones that Marshall Chess really looked out to get and bring in onto like the psychedelic side of the Cadet label. And so I don't know if things in the band didn't turn out well, and that's why they didn't record any more albums for Cadet. But again, this was, I'm pretty sure their last record. I looked it up on Discogs and I didn't see any more listings after this one. The next record in the box set here is Shades of Brown, SOB. Now, I've never heard this record before. I'm pretty sure this is the only album that this group ever produced. When I looked it up on Discogs, this is the only listing I could find for a full album, and it's on the Cadet label. Now, I could, I could say this right off the bat, just from looking at this cover and knowing how covers degrade over time, and even seeing the way that this cover looks now, brand new, pristine, you would never find this cover like this, even like, if you found a mint copy somewhere, I don't even think you could find a mint copy somewhere if you did, it would definitely be degraded. Like there would be some kind of degradation to the brown on this. I know it sounds silly, but like the shades of brown on this cover, it looks so good. The matte finish on this looks so good. And these guys look like a bunch of badasses on the front of this cover. So this is a really good vocal group. It's like 70s funk vocal. Another one here that is extremely hard to find on Discogs, obviously, because I think this is the group's only record. I don't know that it ever got repressed and this might be the only modern repressing of it. A triple A master from Bernie Grudman and it definitely deserves that treatment. It's a real awesome funk soul gem. It's something that I'm pretty sure has been sampled a lot if I'm not aware of the samples that are out there of it. But like I said, this cover is really cool and it's great to have it in this amazing shape. The next one here is a compilation of Beatles covers from Ramsey Lewis, who is an amazing jazz pianist. This is Mother Nature's Son. Again, this one is a classic one where you have a lot of these I would almost say cheesy string arrangements that are in the beginning of these songs. You would hear these like almost Muzak versions of these Beatles tunes, but hang in there after the intro and then get into those chorus and the solo sections and you get some hard, hard grooves and some real awesome funk stuff. Rocky Raccoon on this is amazing. Back in the USSR is really, really good. It has an amazing drum break in it that is just real sick. The string arrangements that are on here, I'm pretty sure are done by probably the same stable and group of musicians and probably arrangers that are on the Soulful Strings record that I talked about in my Christmas albums. So you can definitely check that video out here. But 
This is a really, really good record. The strings on here get really dark at times. I think one thing that I really like from this and from that whole box set is I got turned on from that Dorothy Ashby from the recording quality of the drums. And basically all of these records have that because they're all recorded at Cadet in that warehouse, man. So this is really good stuff. You should definitely check out this record if you don't have it. This is pretty easy to get too. You don't have to get this through the box set. There's, there's a lot of reissues of this one out there. And even I would say the OG pressings are probably not that hard to find. It wasn't really that sought after. Again, if you just put on the first track and you listen to five seconds of it, you might think that this is cheesy, but you gotta let it play for a little bit. You gotta let these grooves sink in and all of a sudden you're gonna get some really good jams. Last in the collection here is Harold Land Quintet, The Peacemaker. Now, this is an extremely hard record to find. I was looking it up on Discogs even to find an original or even to find some available. Most of the records that are out there in this box set aren't even available to find, let alone if you were to pay two or three hundred dollars for them. They don't even have copies out there. And this is one of those ones. There is a reissue out there of this that has a horrible black and white cover, like the whole thing is black and white. This cover is so beautiful. I keep repeating this, but this matte finish on this cover, it just looks so good in the light here as I'm making these videos. You can see it here in this light. It looks so good. The recreation of the photos on the back, the, the cover itself is very sturdy. The vinyl sounds amazing. This one features Bobby Hutcherson on Vibes, and it's the first time Bobby Hutcherson and Harold Land actually got together. Harold Land's a saxophone player. The grooves on this are very cool. Soul jazz, lots of really good soul jazz stuff. This also was originally released in 1968, along with the Dorothy Ashby and the Tell Mama. Man, they were just cranking out the records that year. Again, they had that warehouse. They probably just recorded this at that warehouse. A lot of the same engineers and everything, and they were just cranking out records, man. But 1968 was a good year for Cadet Records. So as I've been saying, this entire set is definitely worth owning. I can say that for sure. It's worth it alone for the Dorothy Ashby Afro Harping. I'm so happy to have that. I have heard that there are gonna be some reissues that might come out of these cadet copies um, outside of the box set, but don't quote me on that. To me, this is a huge, huge value. It's one of the reasons why I talk about Vinyl Me Please and I've been buying their stuff like crazy. They have some really hard to find records and now you're getting AAA Lacquer Cuts by Bernie Grumman for a great value. The member price on this is $350, but I think with other discounts, you can definitely get it lower. I got mine down to $250 using some other discounts and member things. The quality of this box set is amazing. The book that goes with it is really awesome. Cadet is a label that should be remembered and there's a lot of really awesome crossover, jazz, funk, rock, soul, psych stuff going on here that I think a lot of people would really like. Some of these records have some really awesome gems that you, if you listen past a little bit of the cheese with the string or the group vocals, the grooves hit really hard on almost every one of these albums. These records are really high quality as well, even though I did get some issues there and Vinyl Me Please backed it up right away with some replacements or some future credits, which means I get some more vinyl and possibly some more videos are gonna come out. If you are considering getting this box set, I would not wait. There are only a thousand of these that are getting made. They probably might do a second edition, but that is definitely not a sure thing. So you should definitely get it while you can. Okay. I have said enough. Remember to go check out the podcast on this and definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm going to go listen to Dorothy Ashby and chill, and I will see you guys on the next one.